Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the tips and tricks for 2023. So if you're in business or looking to get into business, window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Uh, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy it. Uh, we've been doing this for five years, so tons of episodes. Binge away. Now's the time to do all of the research for this upcoming spring. Uh, I am actually recording this. Uh, this episode will be in February, so um, first week of February means we're getting closer. We're getting closer. So if you haven't yet used me for buying supplies, if you haven't yet used me, why? I actually have a link that is in the bottom of the description. If you click that, I'll bring you to the site and it will tag me also. So I would love to put in orders for you. That's how I make my cheddar. I want to be a help. I want to just put all of that in. So call me, text me, whatever. 862-312-2026. Text me, actually calling me you're gonna wait in line usually but text me i'll get that message i would love to put everything in for you just text me the items you want your name that's it super super simple uh we'll get you loaded up if you haven't yet also get a subscription to the american window cleaner magazine uh awc uh by the way it's the greatest magazine has ever existed uh in my opinion it's been around since 1986 go to awcmag.com get a subscription and be absolutely amazing that's where the stickers come from awesome article anyway i'm off my high horse so today's episode is the tips and tricks for 2023 now i do tips and tricks episodes all the time uh so this one is kind of new but i'm gonna go with a uh actually cleaning tip and then a business tip and a cleaning tip and a business tip and I'm just throwing stuff out there because you know what's cool is even though some of the stuff you may heard me have talk about or poke on or or anything sometimes it just doesn't resonate and these are some really good tips for just making your business run smoother just making everything about it run smoother it really is a big one And I have to tell you, because it's early in the year, I didn't put this in the list. This is going to be like an honorary mention. But I've been talking a bunch about this right now. Here's a big one. Save 30% for taxes. Now, you're not going to necessarily always spend 30%, but 15% unemployment, 15% self-employment, whatever. It ends up being quite a bit. But if you take every deposit you go to the bank, 30% goes into this account. By the end of the year, when taxes come up, you have enough to pay the taxes. And then anything that's in your tax account after the fact, you can use for anything. Put it back in, uh, buy uh, mailers and buy marketing and reinvest in your company, buy gear, buy equipment, whatever. But then you have it and you always, always, always have it. Anyway, stuff like that are little tips that really make a big difference. Uh, if you're new in business, some of these things are going to be a little bit different than what you're you maybe used to or haven't understand it. And everybody's in a different position. Everybody's in a different a different place with tips, with tricks, with all this stuff. Uh, so some of it works and some of it doesn't. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening to it, go to YouTube, find this video. Sorry, find this video. And uh, go ahead and tell me in the comments on YouTube what your favorite tip and trick is right now. Not not necessarily the ones I'm telling you, but tell me a tip or a trick that you use in your day-to-day. I love to hear it. Uh, or text me. Uh, if you text me, uh, it always helps uh, the next person because I can pass it along. So uh, shoot that uh, over to me. Uh, my number again, 862-312-2026. If you're going to text me your tip a trick. Anyway, uh, by the way, it's awesome to talk to some of you. I just got back from IWCA and met a ton of you and it's amazing to see people in real life. So anyway, thanks for everybody. Uh, so the first one that I want to talk about in the tips and tricks is going to be kind of a utilitarian version. Uh, and it's trisodium phosphate TSP. Um, 
everybody's always looking, oh, I got fingerprints, I got grease, I did a gyro place for many, many years, it was disgusting. Uh, there was like a quarter inch of grease on the top of the televisions. Like, it was just so bad. And a life-saving thing for grease film, smoke, if you're doing any type of like fire damage or anything, it's TSP, trisodium phosphate. It's a powder that you find at Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, I think we carried it for a while, but we don't anymore. Uh, but TSP is really, really nice. You just take some of it and sprinkle it in your water. You already mix up your three gallons of soap and water. Mix in that TSP and it will cut film. It cuts smoke. It cuts grease like nothing. Nothing else cuts it like that. So trisodium phosphate is a really, really good one. Um, it, I think now you can mainly find the phosphate-free trisodium phosphate. It's like the longest, hardest words to say. But phosphate-free. So it's like trisodium tsp but not p anyway i don't know but for some reason it probably decided they cause cancer according to california like everything else um but it works really really well uh, if you're doing restaurants too uh i always would do inside restaurants with that because a lot of times the ventilation is pretty good in like nicer restaurants but in like cheaper or uh restaurants that the kitchen's not like blocked it's like an open kitchen. Uh, the windows get grease on them. And it always, always makes it trickier to do. So if you're cleaning and there's like cloudy, weird smears all over the wind, that's grease. Like if you can just do this and like smear it, it's grease. Fingerprints too. Tricetin phosphate really does well for that. Uh, so if you haven't used it yet, go to the Lowe's or Home Depot and uh, find that TSP. I'm telling you. Uh, keep some of it in your uh, truck. It will be worth it. Will be worth it. Um, the first business tip for 2023 is uh, something that we did that uh, I'm really shocked that this isn't a thing. Um, and I've only recently learned it's not. A th I thought it was just common sense. But keep business cards in your pocket and your text pocket, the people who are cleaning, every single day. Every single day. What we did was we had these little, they're like, look like wallets kind of for business cards. Super cheap. You can find them for like five bucks. Um, and we did business cards in these things. And every day the guys would come back and in their uh, bin, they would take their card holder out, put it in their bin. We ran bins, like basically a big trunk of all their gear. Every tech had their own and during the day it would start off. But every tech every day had our business cards in their pocket when they worked. Now, yes, some of our guys would go and search out people because we paid commission for that, but some of our guys wouldn't. But every one of the guys is going to have the potential for somebody walking up and just saying, hey, uh, you guys do window cleaning? Or do you have a card? Or do you have... Absolutely, here's a card. It's in my pocket. Here you go. Give that number a call. They get you an estimate right now, right over the phone. Having the cards means you can hand the cards out. If you don't have the cards, you can't hand them out. Uh, we did another interesting thing um, with uh, plastic uh, plastic cards, uh, plastic gift cards. Um, that is another one where I would say, oh, I actually, I don't have business cards, but I do have these plastic gift cards. These, uh, take one of these, it's $50 off a of service, you know, first service, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it got people the same thing with brochures. If you have brochures, you can play it off that um, you don't have any cards, but I have these brochures, let me give you those. Or you give them a card and a brochure or whatever. All the information you can. The big thing we want to do is separate ourselves from bucket bobs. We always think that the other guy is going to be um, less professional, right? Less informative less impressive we want to be the guys that are most impressive we want to be the guys that have the most stuff we want to be able to ones the ones that help the most right so that's what we do have cards have uh each truck have uh flyers have docks have anything that you have magnets gift cards anything so that they're at the ready and able to be handed out i always thought that was like 
common knowledge. Uh, but I'm surprised how many people don't do that. And then what ends up happening is, no, you have to. And then they're taking pictures of the share. Like, I know your phone numbers and everything, but have it to be able to give it out. Because if I see somebody cleaning windows, I'm going to stop them and say, hey, I'd like an estimate. Because they know you clean windows, right? It's in their brain. That's why people logo and letter their cars. That's why they're wearing nice, fancy, you know, uniforms. It's to gather attention for that street selling. So always have those cards on you. Uh, another one of my um, tips that uh, we did as part of our process and I thought was common knowledge, but it's sills um, and, um, you know, tracks. Clean the tracks and sills of a window before you wet the window. Now hear me out. So my favorite way is to run a track brush or a toothbrush and a little vac, right? Just for heavy dirt or anything, it's easy. Just brush it to agitate it, turns into a powder. It's not stuck anymore, you suck it up. If you don't agitate it, it doesn't really go anywhere. But it's easier to get that out when it's dirt than when it's mud, right? Sometimes people try to do that as like the, the last thing because they're wiping this. But now you're dealing with like caked on mud and your towels are all muddy and it's just like, it's not awesome. So if you do it first when it's dirt, it's easier to suck up, it's easier to blow out, it's easier to agitate, it's just easier. And then at the end, you're gonna wipe the drips anyway, but now you're just kind of like wiping a potentially just dirty, thing not muddy right just whatever remnants are by the way on a vac uh, we used a um, uh, cordless vac we have tried a bunch of them we've used heart ones um, we've used um, uh, a Milwaukee one uh, we used a DeWalt one um, and then I'm trying to think of the other one that we ended up using and I can't but all of them kind of do the same thing um, they have to be charged. You don't want to necessarily have to plug it in because that's a pain in the butt. You want to have it small enough that you can kind of walk through the thing that's on your hip. And if you're doing a vac for tracks, you want to have it bagless because it's easier to dump it out than it is to change bags when the bags get full. At least that's what my thought is. Um, but clean your tracks as dirt before they turn to mud. Really does help, by the way. Um, and uh, this is another business one, and this is the number one thing I think that you could do to change your world. To change your world. Why is it in the middle of the countdown? It's because I wrote it down and didn't move it. But I'm going to talk about it anyway because it is the absolute most important thing. If you get one thing from this episode, well, I hope that it's to buy your supplies for me. Eh, shameless plug. Uh, no, but if it's one thing you get out of this, it's to do the dentist close. Now I know, if you've listened to this podcast, you've heard me say it a billion times. Let me say it a billion and one times. The dentist close is just this. At the end of your spiel, right? The windows are done, everything's got you got, you got your check, you got everything. What does the dentist do? The dentist, when you're all done, oh, do you have my insurance cover? Yeah, here you go. Here's your little bag of of toothbrush and toothpaste and that little thing of floss you're not going to use. Um, oh, and your next appointment's in there. Cool. Thanks. Have a great one. The next appointment's booked six months later. They might have asked you, does morning still work good for you? Yeah. Okay. What do they do? Then they call you the week of, hey, you just uh, heads up. Remember your dentist appointment. Send you a text. Remember your dentist appointment. Send you an email. Remember your dentist appointment's coming on Tuesday. And you go. I got a dentist appointment. And then what happens at that one? They give you another appointment six months later. Why are we not doing this? I know a lot of us are. But why are you not doing that? What we do makes people happy. It's a great service. Window cleaning. People are always happy when you're done. Right? Man, everything looks great. Perfect. Now, did you want to uh, get this done in three months from now? Or did you want to wait six months? Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do six months. Okay, great. So morning appointment again is going to be on, you know, June 7th uh, in the morning. We'll call you the week before just to double check. Um, but uh, still morning appointment sounds good. Cool. You're locked in. 
Imagine if for, you know, an instant. And by the way, even if you don't ask them what works and you just automatically give them the next appointment, I don't even see that being a problem. I've not tried that, but that could be amazing. All right, here's all your goodies. Everything's good to go. Your next appointment is scheduled for this date, six months from now. If anything changes before that, let me know. Whatever, right? What ends up happening with the dentist clothes is not anybody, well, I'm not going to be mad that I've got another dentist appointment. Going to the dentist is a good thing. It's not fun, but it's a good thing, right? Getting your windows, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. If you could take all of your customers, say you have a thousand customers, you know how many customers you have in ballpark. What if 75% of those customers were every six months? That would potentially double your business in a year because of new work plus that. 75%. I know guys that are even close to that. I know guys that are running almost 100% of people around the dentist clothes of their customers. That means that every single customer that they have is getting their windows cleaned every six months. That means that one customer that did, say, $300 is now a $600 a year customer. You still are doing sales. You're still doing promos and marketing. You're getting new customers, and those are stacking up. Guess what? The people who did this close last year are already booked a ton this year. People that I know that do the dentist close add truck or multiple trucks a year. They're growing at that kind of rate, right? It's so much easier to add a truck when you go, oh, cool, we already got like, you know, $100,000 in the books. So everything's adding. We know that we're going to be adding to that. Well, we know that of all of the jobs I did this year, we're going to, we're going to automatically do those jobs next year. So all of the new stuff is growth. What's our projected growth? Like, not only does this change what you do and how often you do it, it changes your dollar amount coming in, your gross, and it changes what you can schedule or what you can at least partially predict. Remember, having route work in general, you know, going and doing storefronts is great because you know that if you get a job weekly, it's almost guaranteed that weekly you have work. Do that with houses. I can't tell you how many times I talk to people and they're like, hey, uh, yeah, no, I don't even call people. I just, I like, they'll come back when they want it. Like, what? How are you growing a company like that? So you're not running your company. You're basically sitting on the raft going down the river. You can kind of steer it a little bit, but you're stuck. If there's rapids, you're going fast. If the water is really slow, you're going slow. You're not, you didn't bring an oar with you. You're not doing anything. You're either just part of your business or you're making your business happen. The dentist clothes makes business happen. The dentist clothes is huge. If you, did, if you remember anything, it's the dentist clothes. Remember that. I won't beat it to death. I'm sorry. Uh, another one that I really, really like for the technique and the window cleaning itself is using a sponge, like a natural sea sponge for sills. Now, you've probably seen natural sea sponges and you're like, well, I use a scrubber. I'm not using a sponge. That's true. That's like, you know, Using sponge to scrub the windows like old stuff. People don't do that anymore. But what you can do is have a sponge. they usually kind of like a ballish thing, the natural ones. Keep it in your pouch. And you're like, why would I put water in my... Hear me out, hear me out. When you do a window, you do the whole window. And you know, some guys will take that squeegee and they hit that sill. Don't do that because it'll line your, your channel and wear it weird. Put your, your channel away. Grab your sponge and hit... All of that water, where all of it collected, the lock, because that sponge can suck up a ton. Go to your right and just squeeze that sponge before you put it in there. All the water's gone. The sponge is dry. Put it back in your pouch. You're not dirtying towels. You're not keeping super soggy wet towels because wet towels hold water. They don't expel water. It takes all the dirty stuff. You can put it back in your bucket if you really want. If you don't, put it on the ground. Either or, it's so much better. And then what happens is because you dried the sill where all the water kind of collects, when you go back with your dry and you hit those edges, it, your towel isn't drip dropping in the super wet stuff. Your towels last way longer. Sponges are like six or seven bucks. They last you forever. But after a year, you want to get rid of one, it's six bucks. 
you're not staining towels, you're not using a thousand towels per job, it just makes sense to use a sponge. I know it's old school, people don't look at sponges that way, but that is a great, great way to do it. Now, if you do it a different way, please do tell me. Um, text me or put it in YouTube or whatever. I'd love to hear how you do it uh, for sills and if you're using sponges. I love sponges. So there you go. And I wouldn't even say I'm old school. Some of you are really old school out there. Uh, and I've never used a sponge to scrub the window. Uh, but unfortunately, I guess, fortunately, I know people who do still. I know guys that don't use T-bars. They still use the horsehair brushes. Remember, it's like a boar's hair brush, but it's just a wooden block that you dunk in your, let it live in your bucket, and you pull and scrub the window. It's like great scrubbing power, tons of water, but you're splashing, you know, your your bucket's empty in like, you know, a house. And then the other side of it is, is that you're holding it like this, and now your knuckles are tired instead of holding a normal handle. The ergonomics are bad. Maybe you do that. Tell me if you do. I also have a guy... This is, uh, this is, man, maybe two months ago. Uh, he said he didn't know what a bucket on a belt was. I said, oh, yeah, this, this is what we do. He goes, man, I've been cleaning windows for like 30 years. I said, and you didn't know? He's like, ah, I don't know. I'm just now noticing that it's like an industry. Like he just had cleaned forever and never even decided to like do research. Just shocking. The people are out there, so. I'm hoping by you listening to a podcast about window cleaning, nerd, uh, but uh, you listening to a podcast, maybe you got the AWC magazine, maybe you are in forums and Facebook groups, you're so much farther ahead than everybody else because you're learning this stuff. Like surround yourself. This is our school. This is our college. If you're window cleaning right now, this is what you could do for the rest of your life. Well, your less, rest of your working life. And if you are doing this for the rest of your working life, why not learn and know and try everything that's out there? It's so shocking that people decide to go to school for something that they're not actually doing. They're like, well, I hope that I get to be a fill-in-the-blank. That's what I'm going to school for. And then 90% of them don't. You have the chance to learn about the industry you're in now by listening to podcasts like this and magazines and everything else that's out there. So anyway, kudos to you. Learn the equipment, right? Sponges are awesome. Get one. It's like five bucks. Tell me if you want one. I'll throw it in your next order. Five five to ten dollars, depending on size. Anyway, yeah. Uh, another really, really, really big game-changing um, business thing is what we talked about earlier. Plastic gift cards and window clings. I know you've heard me talk about it, so I'm going to just touch on it briefly. Plastic gift cards are gift cards. XYZ window cleaning gift cards, right? Your logo's on there. It's a nice gift card. On the very back, I put a bar because you can print whatever you want on those cards. So I like print a black bar that is really not a magnetic strip, but it looks like it, right? They look like gift cards. Make it look like a gift card. Print them up and do them for like 50 bucks. The thing with gift cards, no one throws them out. Look in your wallet. Look in your wife's purse. Look anywhere that somebody has stuff, they have gift cards. It could be have $2 left and they'll keep a gift card because that gift card is money, right? A gift card for $50 of window cleaning is technically only part of the price. Nobody's, nobody's charging $50 for window cleaning. Your minimum should be $189 or $199 or whatever your minimum price for any job is for residential, right? The gift card is great. It has your website and your, your phone number and it's free to try. Give us a shot. Here you go. Now I know you're like, well, I'm not giving away $50. Okay, maybe you're in a position where that doesn't make sense. But $50, you're just not making that $50. You're not losing that money. You're getting a customer. I give those out to absolutely everybody. And when we're done with the job, I put two in there. I say, hey, here's a gift card for you. These gift cards you can give to anybody you know. Anybody you're talking to, card, just give them to your friends. You know, it's money. If you give a coupon, coupon's not money. A coupon, in general, right? $10 off, a $20 purchase. Or 10% off. Or, that instantly in your brain is you think about spending money. Even though they're the same thing, you think about spending money. You don't want somebody to think about spending money. 
you want to have somebody think about getting money. That's why a gift card works. Gift cards. You get them back to hit them with Lysol or whatever, clean them. You can use them forever and ever and ever. They hold up really, really well. And remember, again, if you're having texts with uh, business cards in their pocket, put business cards in the pocket with gift cards. Oh, yeah, I got some of these too. People will use gift cards. It's like, yeah, try us, right? Plastic gift cards are awesome. The other one that is absolutely amazing in the same realm is window clings. Okay. Hear me out on window clings. This one is probably one that gets the most people talking about that they may not do this. But hear me out. When you go get an oil change, they put a little sticker that says when your next oil change should be. Or when your last oil change was or whatever. You get a sticker with your logo and the last date of service. So that every time you're there, you write it down. So that means that every time they look at this little sticker that's in their kitchen window or whatever, it's there, it's not intrusive. Oh man, we, we haven't gotten the windows done since. If they didn't get in on the uh, dentist clothes, right? So some of them may not do it, some of them may not. They may have friends over, they may have cleaners over, janitorial people or whatever, maid service, things like that. Everybody sees that. They're not gonna take it down because it's not intrusive. And it's going to remind them that they need to have their service done. Even if they did the dentist closing in six months. And they see that. like, man, we haven't had our windows clean since spring. We should probably get them done. They'll call. It reminds people to get service done. It's not intrusive. They're cheap. And they're absolutely amazing if you haven't tried them yet. Those are window cleans. By the way, uh, at cost printing here at windowcleaner.com uh, has them. So if you want them, let me know. We'll get you set up. Um, and uh, the last thing, tip, the last trick, the last, this is cleaning related, is my absolute favorite. And this is partially to to uh, troll Steve-O and all the, the, the Stevenator fans. It's use one clip in a channel. Hashtag one clip. You've probably seen it out there. That's what this means. Some people like two clips. Some people like one clip. If you like two clips in your channel, you're wrong. But hear me out. Try this. Just try it. I've never had anybody try it and not like it. So just, just try it. So in a channel, a clipped channel, at a right channel, we'll say, there's clips, end clips, that hold the rubber in. If you have two end clips in, it forces the rubber to be in the position those clips are holding in. Right? So it could be wavy, it could be stretched, it could be bowed, it could be any of that. They're designed... To take one out. They only need one clip. Only one clip. Because that holds the rubber in the channel. But now the rubber lays in the channel. So that means there's nothing holding that rubber in a distorted side. It's not too tight. It's not wavy. It's not too compressed. It's not anything. It's floating there. In the natural shape that rubber channel, rubber itself is. So now when you clean the window, that one clip holds it in there it's not going anywhere but the rubber's laying flat you save so much time uh and runs and streaks and weird things and you know my channel's not working try one clip just try one clip and then you can jump in and tell me that i'm right and steve was wrong <laughs> uh anyway that was a little troll for steve because he's a tube clip guy so anyway um, so yeah, uh, if anything, um, comes up, uh, let me know. I'd love to be your rep. I'd love to put orders in for you. It's really what I do for a living. So please do let me put your order in at windowcleaner.com. But my number is 862-312-2026. Just text me. Let me know. Love to put that in for you. Um, and, um, get the magazine, awcmag.com. Get that magazine. Let me know what I can do as far as getting that for you um, set up. The subscription's cheap. You get stickers every single month. Articles, magazine, to your door, real. Do it. And uh, until next week, go out there and, uh, yeah. More importantly, try the tips and tricks, but more importantly, be epic. <laughs>